I should I don't want to be on blood pressure medication for the rest of my life I got to a point where I lost my faith because there was a point I was angry I was really angry at God and I wanted to just walk in front of a moving bus hey there welcome back to my channel today i've got a mic <laughs> i'm just testing out my mic so um yeah i hope the audio quality is good so like i said in my previous video oh firstly thank you so much for your engagement on my previous video i mean it's just a testament to the fact that it was really god ordained because i was so hesitant to share that part of my life with the world i was i had made a promise to god that if he spared our lives that i would testify that i would testify to his glory but um i just felt like i wasn't really ready to share yet um and i i think it was two or three days ago or two days before i filmed the last video i was in the bathroom and god told me to share at first i thought it was just you know <laughs> my mind but i said okay god if it's you confirm your word and god did confirm his word so someone sent me a um she sent me a message and she was like oh god said that you should yeah record that video and upload it and she gave me like other instructions about it and i was like okay wow <laughs> it really has to be god and yeah let me just go let, let me just do it and stop um, procrastinating so glory to god again glory be to god for everything for this testimony but like i said in my previous testimony in fact th that video was about 57 minutes long but i just had to compress it i had to condense it to um was it 29 minutes yes so i missed out a lot of parts and um i've actually written some things down so that i don't forget so let's jump right into this video right so the thing about preeclampsia is that if you've read well if you've read about it or if you know anything about it it's um basically high blood pressure that develops in pregnancy but apart from high blood pressure in pregnancy it also affects the kidneys it affects the liver and it's it's like a prelude to eclampsia so it's like pre-eclampsia and eclampsia is ultimately a um, seizure when someone goes into it like a seizure and ultimately they die so that's why like it's so it's so it's deadly right so when people have preeclampsia they usually would have like symptoms physical symptoms of high blood pressure such as like um blurry vision seeing flashing lights headaches um upper abdominal pain swelling in hands and in their hands and feet however i think i i didn't manifest any of those symptoms so it was quite even the doctors were quite worried so they saw me they examined me on their world rounds and they were like okay so do you have headaches do you have anything and i kept saying no and then they kept looking at my vitals and like mm, but your blood pressure is high so how come you don't have any of these symptoms and i said well i don't know so because i didn't really manifest any symptoms of preeclampsia i mean apart from the swelling so i mean <laughs> i was my nose got bigger my um my hands and my feet got bigger but it wasn't that bad so i just thought mm, this is normal pregnancy swelling anyways i mean it happens to happens to the best of us where like <laughs> we become nose lean or no and yeah i didn't really think anything of it i didn't have any pain like body pains or back pains no i didn't so the fact that i God, well, God led me to speak to that gynecologist. Really, I think that it really, really saved my life because my next appointment was meant to be on the Thursday, like the Thursday. So I gave birth on Tuesday, 
and my next hospital appointment was meant to be the following Thursday, like two days later. So only God knows what would have happened and the high blood pressure was detected on Saturday. So only God knows what would have happened if it wasn't controlled and, you know, the baby's, my um, daughter's heart rate wasn't monitored. God knows what would have happened between that Tuesday and the Thursday when I was meant to have the next scan. And I couldn't even have um, a maternity shoot because my maternity shoot was slated for the Friday after I gave birth. So I gave birth on a Tuesday and three days later, the following Friday, I was meant to have a shoot. So I had to cancel the shoot. But um, we thank God. We thank God for life. So I was in the postnatal ward for about was it five days yes so i was told that i'd be monitored for five days after five five days um postpartum yes five days after giving birth and i was taking blood thinners so i think it's standard procedure for people who have c-sections here in the uk they're giving blood thinners so they're giving like you have to take an injection they have to inject <laughs> by yourself in either your thigh or your tummy but um because i i'm just i'm very squeamish <laughs> and yeah I, I couldn't do it myself so um while i was at the hospital i would ask a nurse to help me and then when i got home it was either my mom or my husband who did it for me so yeah like i said standard procedure um for someone who has had a c-section in the uk is to be on blood thinners for about seven, I think it's a week, or there about yeah, seven days, just to prevent any blood clots. However, <laughs> because I had preeclampsia, I was on blood those blood thinners for six whole weeks, like six long weeks. You can imagine how many days that and those were. So it was. I think I even have some bruises on my legs because on my thighs because I was injected every single day and I didn't want to risk having a blood clot. So I did that and I was still on blood pressure medication for about, um, would I say eight weeks or thereabouts? Yeah, eight weeks postpartum. I went for my six week postpartum check. Everything was fine. Like my scar healed um, perfectly well. Um, the doctor told me, yeah, the doctor advised that I could start like exercising, but <laughs> I had no time to exercise because my child was in the NICU and I had to go there practically like every day to, um, to be with her. I was still monitoring my blood pressure at this time. And I, I had like, I had anxiety, you know, my doctor said I should check, she said I should check every day, but I should try. If I couldn't do every day, I should try um, checking every other day. And guys, I kid you not, I was so scared. Like <laughs> There were times where I would, just before I would, I would check. So you know, if you're anxious, your heart rate goes up. And of course, your blood pressure would go up as well. So most times, I would, like, I would actually be sweating and panicking. <laughs> I would have a mini panic attack before checking my blood pressure because I was just so scared. Like, I'm still young. I'm still young. I know I look younger than I actually am, but I'm still young. I'm pretty young. And I was really scared. I was like, God, why should I? I don't want to be on blood pressure medication for the rest of my life because that is a possibility. And that's usually what happens to um, people like preeclampsia survivors so that was another thing that i had to you know go through and it was it was really tough but we thank god um my blood pressure is normal now i'm off the blood pressure medication i yeah and i was also going to the hospital i think every was it every two weeks or so yes to monitor my kidney and my liver function levels they were still very high i remember one time i went to the hospital and i think the normal liver is it art or alt i've forgotten what it is but um i think the the normal range i was told the normal range was i think between 30 and 35 but mine was like 120 something 
like it was really and then i had to go for a liver a liver scan a liver ultrasound scan. the nurses and the doctors just couldn't understand why weeks after my liver function my liver function is it liver function levels were still high so they just wanted to be sure that there was no inflammation of my liver so i had to do that so you can imagine you're trying to heal you're trying to you know be there for your child and then you're you're also dealing with all of this at the same time like it was a lot and then um another thing that happened was yes fear so i dealt with a lot of fear like i was really i was just really scared there was a time where i like i was having a conversation with another friend of mine who also had preeclampsia but she gave birth at 37 weeks hers wasn't as um early as mine it didn't happen as early as mine so um yeah she she said she wanted she was content with just a child and i think yeah i also said the same thing because i said wow i i don't know if i want to go through all of this again and i was in the shower one day and i just heard god say why do you want to let the enemy rob you of what is yours and i was like oh lord father um i repent i'm sorry so god's promise for us for our marriages in, in psalm 128 and it says your children shall surround your table now children doesn't mean one it means at least two so why do you understand like why would you why would you rob allow the enemy rob you of what is yours god has promised you children so why would you say you want one because of this experience so i said lord i repent and then i stopped saying that so in terms of healing mentally uh, i had read an article so someone posted an article about how she had a miscarriage and how gratitude journaling really helped her so i remembered that as article and yeah i started gratitude journaling even though i was like i was in so much pain i was grieving yeah i was grieving i didn't even know i was grieving i was grieving the loss of a beautiful experience which i had imagined which i had looked forward to experiencing so um yeah probably went through all the five stages of grief but i feel like grief and gratitude can coexist because in my notes app i I actually i yeah i journal i journaled in my notes app during that period and even if it was just god i thank you i thank you that you know my scar is healing well i thank you that i have a supportive husband i thank you that i have a supportive family just like little things in my day that i was able to be grateful for so that helped my mental health and then i was also seeing a therapist from the hospital i think that i started seeing her about maybe over a month after my baby was born i didn't know that they um, offered such such services so yeah the therapist asked me and she's like oh how are you coping and i said well i've been gratitude journaling she said oh yeah that's good because it also helps you it helps you focus on like the 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 silver lining you know in this cloud as it were so um that was helpful to be able to talk about my feeling even regarding my own faith i got to a point where i lost my faith i kid you not like I almost lost my faith well i would say i almost lost my faith because there were times when people would call me or pray for me or like send me messages and i'll be like yeah yeah i mean i prayed i had faith but hey this i still went through what i went through i mean i would have conversations with conversations with people about oh, faith you know the bible says if you've got faith as small as a, mu- a mustard seed that you will move mountains but hey what happened here and i mean 
I don't have the answers. I might never have the answers, but I'm grateful for the fact that one, God kept me. He spared my life, spared the life of my daughter. And you know that scripture that says, God comforts us so that we can in turn comfort others. Like I've, I've actually seen it play out in my life just within how many hours, less than 24 hours after posting the past one of my birth story. People have reached out to me and they've told me their stories. They're in like similar situations. And because people hardly talk about things like this, yes, I understand. It's very, it's very private. It's it's like putting out yourself, putting yourself out there, and it's not easy at all. But it can feel very lonely. So I'm just so I'm happy to provide support to anyone who might be going through this if you know anyone who's going through this you can always share the video with the person and just to be that glimmer of hope that if god did it in my life and the life of my daughter god will do it in your life like he's the same god yesterday today and forever and i think the most important thing is to be in tune with like first of all to be in tune with the spirit of god who will direct you and who will show you things and who who will, because i can't imagine if like if if not for the spirit of god i wouldn't i wouldn't even be here i wouldn't even be here making this video so it's important to be one in tune with god in tune with god the spirit of god so that you can hear god for yourself and then when you hear god you obey him and you act immediately because if I had spoken to the guy in me, or if I had, if God, God said, okay, call this person. And if I said, no, maybe I'll call to her tomorrow. I don't know what would have happened. And when God tells you to do something, make sure you obey. Like you obey him because he knows, he sees the end from the beginning. So if he tells you to do something, you had better do it. Like, like yesterday, do it with so much alacrity. Yeah, this is what happened. God saw me through god kept me the fact that my life is a testimony and i will keep testifying like my daughter is a living she's literally a living testimony like a living walking breathing miracle sometimes i felt guilty for feeling like angry because there was a point i was angry i was really angry at god and up to the point where i couldn't pray you know i couldn't pray i just told a couple of my friends that you i'm just upset i can't pray so please pray for me so um yeah when sometimes when you hit work bottom or when you're walking through the valley of the shadow of death it's tough it's tough like and if you're going through this don't let anyone trivialize your pain or trivialize your experience the fact that you're carrying the burden like you're carrying it so gracefully doesn't mean that it's not heavy it's not that or it doesn't mean that it's not painful it is but we thank god for his grace and we thank god for his strength and yeah sometimes i broke down like i remember one time i called like one of my yeah, bones i call her one of my bones she's a um she's a psychiatric doctor and she was always there like you know shout out to you i know you, you will probably will watch it but thank you so much for always being there like i would call her and i would cry you know there was a time I, I came out from the gp and i was just i was just tired like I was t the only thing that the only thing that made me want to live or exist was my daughter i was like oh god if i i i, I was walking to the gp or no, walking back from the gp and i wanted to just walk in front of a moving bus because i i just i just didn't want to exist anymore because i was tired you know you're dealing with so much pain and so i called her and she said oh tell it don't like she always just knew the right things to say so thank you so much i'm really i'm extremely grateful to you I, i've realized that pain like i've <laughs> i have experienced pain like in its rawest in its truest form 
this year and i've realized that there's really nothing anyone can do or say to take away your pain you know apart from the holy spirit who is our comforter but there's really nothing like people people can do they can buy you things they can always reassure you they can tell you everything in the world but nothing could take away that pain that burden like that pain that i was feeling i had to go through the fire like i had to go through the fire by myself no one could really understand i mean and it's fine except you go through something like this you might not really understand but please just try and show empathy and show grace be graceful towards towards people praise jesus thank god like all glory to god for saving my life and if you don't have that personal relationship with god I would invite you to just accept Jesus Christ into your life. Because even if, yes, even if, oh yeah, I'm a Christian, I go to church. But if I didn't have that personal relationship with God, where I'm able to hear, God speaks to us in different ways. Where I'm I'm able to discern how God speaks to me, I probably might not be here doing this video today so it's important to have that and if you don't if you'd like to have a relationship with god invite jesus christ into your life you know feel free to send me a dm and um i will guide you through the process salvation is free it's a free gift so why not accept salvation today accept jesus christ today and your life will be changed yes god doesn't promise us god doesn't promise us a smooth sail in fact, Jesus Christ himself says, in this world, you would have um, tribulations, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So anyone who tells you that, oh, because you're a Christian, you would have a smooth, you would have like, your life will be a walk, walk in the park. It is a lie. And that gospel is incomplete. Because even David said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And the Bible also says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. So it's, well, I think I've learned so many things and part of which is the fact that as a Christian, we will encounter so many challenges, but we have to be ready to fight. Like we have to fight we have to fight even the bible says fight the good fight of faith there are things that will come the experiences that we'll have that will contend with our faith yes that's my testimony and i guess you'll see my face on here more often so thank you so much and if you enjoyed the video please like share subscribe and thank you bye